No time to talk. Let's get out of here.
Ouch! Oof, where are we? You must search through the corridors of the pyramid to find your friend. Be very careful to explore the room at the top of the stairs. It contains helpful information if you can unlock its secrets. Now go, there's little time. You must search through the corridors of the pyramid to find your friend. Be very careful to explore the room at the top of the stairs. It contains helpful information if you can unlock its secrets. Now go! There's little time. library will be closing in five minutes. Do you think anyone will believe us? Who cares? We have an A in the bag! Attention villagers! As mayor of this village, I must coordinate all the workers to get King Jaguar's temple built. It's a big task, and must be done as soon as possible. As the farmer, I watch over our majestic fields. I need the help of many workers to grow and harvest corn for the villagers. Have I got a deal for you. If you give me enough workers to go to the trading village, I'll keep the villagers well fed and well stocked with supplies. Trust me. I'm the builder. It's my job to complete King Jaguar's temple. The project's success depends on having enough workers to transport limestone from the quarry to the construction site and enough workers to build the temple. I'm the scribe. Nothing slips past me. I always know when you've been bad or good, and I'm usually around to tell you just what I think. Lucky you. To be a successful farmer, it is helpful to determine the ideal number of workers needed in the fields. To do this, you must consider the type of field and the season. One way to allocate workers is to estimate what the ideal number of workers is. Or you could solve an equation that will help you allocate workers efficiently. For example, if you are farming raised fields and you need to know how many workers are needed in the spring, you might be told that in the spring, raised fields require three times more workers than terraced fields and that terraced fields require 10 workers. You can use this information to write an equation. The number of workers in raised fields is three times the number of workers in terraced fields. In other words, three times the number of workers in terraced fields equals the number of workers in raised fields. Since you know that terraced fields require 10 workers, you can replace the letter T with the number 10. Now, multiply 3 times 10, which equals 30, which means R, or raised fields, equals 30. Raised fields require 30 workers during the spring. May you be a wise and successful farmer. You are the supervisor of a group of workers. There are three jobs. You must decide how to distribute the workers. At first, you might divide the workers into three equal groups. This may not be the best arrangement of workers. You may need to adjust the groups. You could move workers around, but this may get confusing and time-consuming. Fortunately, there is a tool that helps you assign workers to jobs. This tool uses colored bars to represent jobs. The sliders are used to change the number of workers. This tool makes it easy to change the number of workers assigned to each job. If there were 100 workers and 3 jobs, you could have 25 workers for the first job and 45 workers for the second job. That leaves 30 workers for the third job. Or you could have 50 workers for the first job. 40 workers for the second job, and 10 workers for the third job.
This tool also lets you represent the number of workers for each job as a percentage of the total number of workers. 50% of the workers are assigned to the first job, 40% of the workers are assigned to the second job, and 10% of the workers are assigned to the third job. You may practice using this tool in the strategy room. There are two types of workers needed to build a temple. Quarry workers to gather the limestone and builders to build the temple. The more workers you have, the more work that can be completed. To use workers most efficiently, it is important to find the right balance of quarry workers and builders. If you have too many quarry workers and not enough builders, then there will be more limestone than the builders can use. Two quarries are needed to gather enough limestone to build a temple. Allocating workers to efficiently produce the most limestone can be a little tricky. Since there are different rates at which workers can gather limestone for each quarry, it is important to allocate workers for maximum efficiency. For example, workers at quarry A can gather four pieces of limestone per worker if there are between 1 and 50 workers. If there are between 51 and 300 workers, then they can gather 2 and 5 tenths pieces of limestone each. Workers at quarry B can gather 3 and 5 tenths pieces of limestone each if there are between 1 and 100 workers, and 3 pieces of limestone each if there are between 101 and 300 workers. If there were 150 workers available, it would be best to have 50 workers at quarry A and 100 workers at quarry B. 50 workers times 4 pieces of limestone each equals 200 pieces of limestone and 100 workers times 3 and 5 tenths pieces of limestone each equals 350 pieces of limestone. Altogether, the 150 workers could gather 550 pieces of limestone. There are many ways to allocate workers in order to successfully build a temple. Carefully consider the options and you will do well. A rate or ratio expresses a comparison. Traders use rates when they make trades. This trader may trade 4 pieces of jade for 10 cacao beans, or 4 pieces of jade for 7 pieces of pottery. This trader may trade 10 cacao beans for 7 pieces of pottery. A trade rate may be expressed several ways. 4 for 7, or the fraction 4 sevenths, are two ways to represent the same rate. As a trader, you need to find a rate that is best for you. If you want to trade jade for cacao beans, you should compare the rates each of the cacao bean traders is offering. Which is the better rate for the jade trader? Three pieces of jade for six cacao beans, or seven pieces of jade for 12 cacao beans? To help you decide, you may want to write each rate as a fraction. Then compare fractions. Find a common denominator for the two fractions. Now it is easier to compare the two rates. Six pieces of jade for 12 cacao beans or seven pieces of jade for 12 cacao beans. Six pieces of jade for 12 cacao beans or seven pieces of jade for 12 cacao beans. Six pieces of jade for 12 cacao beans is a better rate for the jade trader. He would give away only six pieces of jade instead of seven pieces to get 12 cacao beans. What if the rate from one trader were six pieces of pottery for four cacao beans and the rate from another trader were five pieces of pottery for three cacao beans? When these rates are expressed as fractions, they are improper fractions. You may compare improper fractions the same way you compare proper fractions by finding a common denominator. Which rate is better? 18 pieces of pottery for 12 cacao beans or 20 pieces of pottery for 12 cacao beans. 18 pieces of pottery for 12 cacao beans is the better rate for the pottery trader. Trade wisely and you will prosper. The library will be closing in 20 minutes.
Please make your selections and bring them to the checkout desk. Will you get in here and help me? Don't panic, I'm here. So what are we doing anyways? Pyramids. Does our Central America project ring a bell? <laughs> well, everyone knows the pyramids are in Egypt. Wrong. Were you figuring baseball scores during class again? Boring? I mean, who cares about some old pyramids anyway? Boring? Take a look at this. This is one of the pyramids in the Yucatan. Cool. My aunt and uncle live right there. A feature of mine pyramids is the decorated wall with small doors as the only opening. I'd like to put my little brother in there. <laughs> Will you get serious? We need this for our project. Besides, it's interesting. The Mayans were obsessed with time measurement. They developed a complex calendar which reached into the past and forward into the future. Did you feel that? Like a chilly breeze? Yeah. The Mayans believed that the universe would end on December 24th, 2011. Oh, ooh. <laughs> hey, too cool. Chichen Itza in northern Yucatan has a caracol. That means snail. Named for its spiral staircase, it was an observatory with windows which corresponded exactly to the positions of celestial bodies. Yeah, why don't you just wake me up when it's time to split? Some partner you are. I'll be right back. I'm going to go check out these books. I'm afraid your friend has been transported into another dimension. How? Why? There's no time to explain. He must return before the eclipse ends its cycle and the full moon shines brightly again. Or what? Or the eclipse portal closes and he can't return to his real world. Wow! What can I do? Lift the page. <laughs> 